Good evening, it's 19 hours Central African time and welcome to the ZMBC Main News. I am Paxina Hankanga and my sign language caster is Lavnessa Simbe. Well, let's just quickly take a look at stories making headlines in the news tonight. President Edgar Lungu says he has received reports that some civil servants are being harassed on account of belonging to certain regions. Invest Trust Bank Zambia PLC has joined the winding up proceedings of the Post Newspapers Limited in liquidation as secured creditor. Government will this year sign a 220 million kwacha contract for the Kalomo, Dundumwezi, Itejiteji, Namwala Road in Southern Province. And several houses have been flooded while one has collapsed in Osaka's Mississippi compound. And now the details. President Edgar Lungu says he has received reports that some civil servants are being harassed on account of belonging to certain regions. President Lungu says regionalism and tribalism are a danger to the unity of the nation and that he will not tolerate it. Speaking when he addressed a meeting in Lundazi district in Eastern Province, President Lungu said that people should be judged on their competence and not where they come from. He said civil servants, just like any Zambian, are free to be belong to any political party but should desist from engaging in parties and politics. Michael Kaumba now reports. President Edgar Lungo has started his two-day fact-finding mission to the eastern province. The president says he wants to establish the full extent of the damage that has been caused by army worms. After addressing the supporters and meeting Paramount Chief Mpezeni, the head of state headed to Lundazi, where he addressed the meeting. What I'm saying for those of you who don't understand Nyanja, I'm saying good tea. Don't claim ownership of the party. Just claim membership of the party. Because the party has got no honor. You should just say, I'm a member. Not that I'm the owner of PF. PF is owned by all of us collectively. Because we belong and believe in the vision that the party espouses. The president also had a timely reminder for the nation. Lastly, I want peace, I want unity. All of us should unite. I want to make this very clear because some of you are harassing people on the basis of where they are coming from. That has to stop. Nikamba chifuwa na mvela, kuliwa tuvena ngu wasu za wansawa ukamba kuti anachoka na kusawa the province. Siku ni wasa anachoka na kusawa the province ni wa UPND, yae. That has to stop now. Siku ni wasa anachoka na kubalemba ukubosa ni wa PF, yae. Chifuwa anayamba pati ya PF ni mutonga, ni shibosa wa PF ni watonga. President Lungu proceeded to inspect maize fields which have been affected by army worms where he got first hand information. What's the effect of family? I mean, what are you doing in terms of sensitizing the farmers to the lookout? Because some of them don't visit their fields. Yeah, no, the, but the message has gone now. Okay. Yes, we're, we're getting a lot of response from our means on the same. The head of state also visited Lundazi General Hospital, which is still under construction. He wasn't too happy and wants work to be completed here 
before government can allocate resources for more projects. We cannot have so many projects going all over. We are finished. <laughs> Don't ask for new things before you finish what you have in the chamber. President Lungu then held a meeting with traditional leaders. The chiefs presented their views to the head of state. Uh, Your Excellency, our, our many roads uh, leading to our palaces and the chiefdoms are at large and uh, in the dilapidated states are in bad shape, so to say. So our appeal to your office is to look into to it that the, our roads are maintained, our roads are upgraded, our palaces also need their attention. President Lungu concluded his visit to Lundazi by meeting PF party officials behind closed doors. Michael Kaumba, ZNBC News, Lundazi, Eastern Province. And uh, President Lungu has directed the Eastern Water and uh, Sewerage Company to work on proper embankments around the Katete Dam to protect it against soil erosion. President Lungu has noted that there is need for the Water Utility Company to put in place effective measures that will enhance the protection of the dam to prolong its lifespan. The head of state was speaking in Katete today when he toured the Katete Dam and the water treatment plant constructed at a cost of 170 70 million kwacha. Michael Lubinda has more in this report. The district in Eastern Province has for a long time been having challenges of access to clean and safe drinking water. This is because people here depend on 16 boreholes for water supply. But the Eastern Water and Storage Company has constructed a dam and a treatment plant at a cost of 170 million kwacha as a way of improving water supply in the district. President Edgar Lungu, who is in Eastern Province for a three-day working visit, has visited Katete to check on the dam. Not even in five years, sir. Yeah. With this amount of rainfall, yes. the amount of rainfall, yes. yes. and the traffic, yes. Yes. So yes, there's too, there's too much pressure, pressure. Yes. to build the strong embankment. Yeah. Yes, yes. That, that wall, the have concrete to one. We have to extend it. It's better to do the concrete. Yes. Mm. Yes. Yes. Mm. Yes. Yes. Mm. yes. 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 Further studies should help us. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yes. Lighton Kanoa is Eastern Water and Storage Company Managing Director and now gives the scope of the project. Uh, that's about two and a half meters remaining. When that, that the, the white part is, is full, is, is covered, then water will start spilling to, okay. to the spillway. So that's excess water. Okay. Yes. What so, do you use it for? Um, this is for environmental flow, downstream yeah. users to use ah. that water. Yes. And the residents have praised government for the development. Apa kuri boma chitoko za maningi chimene na chita kutiga nizira nkani ya manzi sa watuamu na mukatete chukwa titandi zika tuonga ziko e, kudara manzi ya nari kutivuta wakari bukutipangira damu tunayi kusawusika maningi maza meteze kuma tenze kuma manzi ya doti Yes, we, we used to have water problems before the dam came, came in yeah, whereby there will be specific time when water would be available and there will be another time when you won't have water and you know with a family it would, it's a problem especially with the, the toilets inside with kids but uh, currently with the help of a dam we don't have any problems water is there throughout the day the construction of this dam will surely change the lives of people in katete district as it has helped them have access to clean and safe drinking water which is important to the well-being of the people Michel Olubinda for Zanis News in Katete District, Eastern Province. And President Lungu has asked the church to embrace politicians and welcome them in their midst. President Lungu says politicians need prayers from the church as they are fellow believers. Speaking at the Reformed Church in Zambia, RSCZ, welcoming ceremony of Rev. Reverend Masauso Moyo in Chipata this morning, President Lungu said government considers the church as its partner in development. We have a report. President Edgar Lungu was today the guest of honor at the welcoming church service for Reverend Masao Somoyo at the Reformed Church in Zambia Congregation in Chipata Central. 
The president was welcomed by church elders and a brass band. President Lungu led the congregation in welcoming Reverend Moyo. And when he addressed the congregation, President Lungu encouraged the church to welcome politicians in their midst whenever they want to worship with them. Please receive us as your fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. Don't see politics in our presence in church. Because uh, there has been this anxiety by the church that we are interfering. When we come, we don't come as presidents or ministers, we come as fellow congregants, fellow believers. We see what as such. And if the message is hard hitting, and that's the message you prepared, please don't change. Utenga, Ulema Konseka, Ulema Farisa, just because Babura, one day, was a sinter. Kuti I, without Kuza, Kanaka Bura Puchet, or where he's not encouraged, the Zamba Bura Puchet, he said, We come here as fellow believers and nothing more. President Lungu also described the church as government's partner. About a lot of things which may not be seen in the biblical, but the impact on the church because sick and healthy believers and educated believers don't make a good church. You have realized that the calling for you is not merely spiritual ministry, but it goes beyond that. And we in PF have realized and accepted that. So when you find yourselves providing church schools under the churches, hospitals under the churches, you are doing our calling and we should interface with you and help you. Earlier, the head of state are these words of encouragement from the church. I know for sure that uh, if Zambia has to change, there is need for that process of reformation. People have to reform right from the, uh, the inside so that things can go right outside there. And so it remains a, our prayer as church that uh, we continue praying for those that are in leadership and everyone else that the process of reformation might be uh, realized and completed. Bakateka, depend on God. Even as you lead this country, depend on God. Depend on God. Because God is saying, even those that did not vote for you in good numbers, they are His people. And He says, go there, go in there for and be their president. After attending the church service, President Lungu proceeded to Katete for other duties. Michael Kaumba, ZNBC News, Chipada, Eastern Province. The Ministry of Fisheries and Livestock has partnered with the Ministry of Health to address the outbreak of anthrax in Western Province. And 67 people are reported to be ill, out of which two are suspected to have died from anthrax from November 2016 to January 17th, 2017. Minister of Health Chitaluchi Lufia has since warned residents in the, in the province to desist from consuming meat from cattle that died from suspected anthrax. Meanwhile, Minister of Fisheries and Livestock Michael Katambo says his ministry is carrying out a mass vaccination exercise to contain the disease. Mark Ziligone gives us details in this report. He is among the 67 victims who have been infected with the anthrax disease in Western Province. As if that is not enough, Sianga Muali has been widowed by the disease after it claimed his wife's life, leaving him with three children. I lost my wife on the 14th of January from anthrax. I am uh, urging the people here not to consume any meat from dead animals suspected to have died from anthrax. And government has swung into action putting measures to mitigate the impact of the disease of human and animal life. The ministries of health and fisheries and livestock have joined forces to contain the disease hence visiting the province for first-hand information. We are going to work very closely with the Ministry of uh, Livestock and Fisheries to combat anthrax. And our presence 
in a disjoint briefing just demonstrates the commitment we have uh, to collectively fight uh, this outbreak. It also is a response to the call by the President for us to coordinate coherently across sectors to ensure that our people are healthy. 69 Keto have been reported to have died from suspected anthrax and it is the consumption of their meat that has been the source of the disease among humans. Minister of Fisheries and Livestock Michael Katambo is urging people here to desist from consuming or handling such meat. If any cattle is found dead, anthrax must be suspected and therefore the animal should not be touched or consumed but should be reported to our nearest veterinary uh, service officers. Vaccination of cattle in all affected areas is ongoing in the province as a way of protecting the animals from getting anthrax. Government has so far spent 500,000 kwacha in procurement of vaccines to address the anthrax breakout in Western Province. And the partnership between the Ministry of Health and the Ministry of Fisheries and Livestock has set a target to vaccinate over 46,000 cattle in Western Province. Mark Ziligone, ZNBC News, Mongu, Western Province. Well, thank you, Mark, for that report. Minister of Transport and Communications, Brian Mushimba, says an estimated one billion U.S. dollars is needed to revamp the Tanzania-Zambia railways at Tazara. Mr. Mushimba says the process of revamping the railway line owned by Tanzania and Zambia will take five years. He says the railway line cannot be shut because it still has a lot of potential. The minister has also disclosed that concession talks between the two governments and uh, the Chinese investors are ongoing. He was speaking when he toured the Tazara Training Center and workshop in Pika Muchinga province. We looked at uh, phase one to be around 380 million. Uh, phase two and phase three will require um, roughly, I think the whole, the whole revamping plan will be close to a uh, billion US dollars when it's said and done. And by that time, I think you'll see a totally new Tazara that will be sustained from there moving forward. It has a place in the transport subsector. Rail is good, but there are certain things that should not be moved by rail. The appropriateness of the modes of transportation has to come into here. Because it's not just government, because I talked about the SI that government is doing, which is going to compel certain heavy cargo to move onto rail. And people said, why are you doing that? What we are doing as a government is to incentivize the proper way of moving certain things. Now, Invest Trust Bank Zambia PLC has joined the winding up proceedings of the Post Newspapers Limited in liquidation as secured creditor. Post Newspapers Limited provisional liquidator Lewis Mosho says that this follows a ruling by High Court Judge Sunday Conde on January 19, 2017, after an application by employees of the Post Newspaper in liquidation. Mr. Mosho is confident that employees of the post will be paid salary arrears after the settlement of sums due to the secured creditor Invest Trust Bank, Zambia PLC. He has advised all employees to register their claims with the office of the provisional liquidator, either by phone or email with their pay slips. He has also disclosed that um, uh, modalities are being worked out on how assets will be sold in order to pay creditors, including uh, preferential ones like uh, the Zambia Revenue Authority, ZRA. Mr. Mosho has also disclosed that criminal proceedings against persons who have continued to hide assets for the Post newspaper will commence in a few days' time. He says concealing the assets amounts to fraud on creditors and constitutes an offence under the laws of Zambia. Mr. Mosho from uh, Lewis uh, Nathan Advocates says assets such as motor vehicles are being held by employees are required to be surrendered for accountability purposes and uh, shall be taken into account when assessing what is due to the affected workers. He has advised all employees to register their claims so that they are taken into account when assessing payment to workers who are still holding Holding vehicles. Now, this is contained in a statement availed to ZMBC News in Osaka today by Mr. Mosho. Well, right now we take a break, but do join us for more news after that. 
Well, thank you for still staying with us. We continue with the rest of the news. 120 workers at uh, Kifco Packaging Company in uh, Kabwe have gone without salaries for two years, six months. This is due to the company's financial challenges. Central Province Minister Sidney Mushanga says AN Chambers has since been appointed as receiver to facilitate talks with investors who are expected to address the challenges that the company is faced with. Marcel Sonquire reports from Kabwe. This is Kifiko Packaging Company in Kabwe, Central Province. About a decade ago, the company was producing various packaging products to satisfy the entire Sadiq market. The company was also able to employ over 600 people. But now only 120 workers have remained at the company. These workers have not received their salaries for 30 months now. We are renting houses. We have school children. We have other needs to, tend, to attend to, but uh, as we have said, it's more than 30 months we have got no, we haven't been, we haven't received any salary. Due to the company's grave financial challenges, a receiver has been appointed to mediate talks with some local and foreign investors who are expected to invest in the company and deal with some of the problems at Kifco, including salary arrears. We don't want to see any of you losing employment, the receiver has been appointed. Once this credible investor is found, <coughs> it's part of the deal that this investor is supposed to uh, take care of what this company is owing you for eight months. And the workers who were addressed by the Central Province Minister said life has been unbearable without salaries. The workers said their children are no longer able to go to school. This caused union representatives to appeal to the Central Province Minister, Sidney Mushanga, to talk to school authorities to allow affected children to enroll in school until their parents are paid their dues. The receiver, A.N. Chambers, has assured the workers that a new investor will take over the company in the next four weeks. Kifco is of great interest to the government because it pro provides uh, employment for the people of Kawe. So it's for that reason that I've also made it taken the receivership very seriously. Several groups that want to invest, and we, within a few weeks, the problems of the workers here will end. And Mr. Mshanga says government will ensure that the new investor takes on all employees who will be willing to stay. Masauso Mukwayaya, ZNBC News, Kawe, Central Province. Government will this year sign a 220 million kwacha contract for the Kalomo Dudumwezi Itejiteji um, Namwala Road in Southern Province. Minister of Housing and Infrastructure Development Ronald Chitotela says the contract will be signed before the end of March. Mr. Chitotela says the procurement processes for the road, which will be co financed by the government and the African Development Bank, have been completed. He says the contractor will move on site after the rainy season once the contract is signed. Mr. Chitotela says the Kalomo Dudumwezi Iteji Teji Namwala Road will be built in one year and the contractor will have a four-year contractual obligation for maintenance works. The minister said this when he paid a courtesy call on Kalomo District Commissioner Cosmas Jiba. And Mr. Chitotela says government plans on having a dual carriageway from Turnpark area to Kazungula once the Kazungula Bridge is complete. He says this will enhance trade between Zambia and the Southern um, Africa region by easing the flow of transport, rather traffic, which is anticipated to increase after the construction of the Kazungula Bridge. 
Now, government has delivered five metric tons of maize seed to northern province to enable small-scale farmers whose crops were attacked by pests to start replanting. Provincial Permanent Secretary Lobota Nkunika has confirmed the development to Zanis in Kasama today. Mr Nkunika says uh, the maize seed will be distributed to various agricultural camps to enable farmers easily access uh, them and replant their fields uh, ravaged by either army worms or stock borers. He has urged the agricultural staff to make sure the beneficiaries of the seed from government commence the replanting exercise without further delays. Mr Nkunika further says the provincial administration is optimistic that the good rainfall pattern in northern province will support the growth of the replanted maize seed. Meanwhile, about 20,000 electronic voucher cards have been distributed to eligible farmers in northern province. This came to light during a media briefing addressed by northern province minister Brian um, Mundubile in Kasama. Mr. Mundubile has since called for the speedy distribution of farming inputs to the beneficiaries of the e-voucher cards by agro-dealers in the region. The position on the uh, armywem and uh, grain borer is that generally as a province now we are stable, it's under control. You, you remember colleagues that um, His Excellency the President of the Republic of Zambia, Mr. Edgar Chagolungu, had intervened to ensure that the distribution of chemicals to various districts countrywide was done expeditiously. And to this extent, we have had chemicals distributed to every part of the country. And our officers in various districts, including districts in Northern Province, were on hand to ensure that uh, affected areas were sprayed to fight the attack on the Army Web and uh, the Grand Borough. We received five metric tons of uh, early maturity seed so that all those who were affected, they can come and uh, they can collect the seeds also at the campsites. This is not for sale and it must go to the people who are affected. Muchinga Province Permanent Secretary Bright Nundwe says he has received reports of theft of farming inputs by some civil servants in Shiwangandu district. Mr. Nundwe has told ZNBC News in a telephone interview that there is a cartel of civil servants who include police officers, councillors and staff from the Ministry of Agriculture. He says some arrests have been made among them an official from the Ministry of Agriculture in the district while a police officer denied being involved but that his truck was only hired to ferry the inputs. Mr. Nundwe has since warned any civil servant found wanting and proven guilty of instant dismissal because their act is a threat to food security in the country. He has also revealed that a truck laden with fertilizer destined for Malawi and being driven by foreigners has been impounded. Mr. Nundwe says the fertilizer is believed to have been meant for Mafinga and Chama districts. Meanwhile, the UPND in Kaoma has urged the government to expedite the farming input distribution exercise in the, in the district. UPND district coordinator Ken Indumba says many farmers in the district have not yet received their fertilizer and maize seeds for the 2016-2017 farm farming season. Mr. Ndumba says the Ministry of Agriculture staff should ensure the distribution of inputs um, for many farmers is hastened. And about 53 farming households in uh, Matipa and um, Muchinshi areas of uh, Chilubi district have been surveyed for army worms and maize stock borers in the past week. Now, according to a weekly report issued by District Agriculture Coordinator Francis Motale, the survey has revealed that there are no army worms in Chilubi district. Mr. Mtale, however, stated that incidents of maize stock borer attacks have been reported in all the nine agriculture camps of Chilubi, adding that the pest has since been contained and no economic damage has been recorded to the crop. 
Now, all patriotic front members of parliament on the Copper Belt have endorsed President Edgar Lungu to recontest the presidency in the 2021 general elections on the ruling party's ticket. Chairperson of the Copper Belt members of parliament, Alexander Chiteme, says all 17 patriotic front MPs in the province have endorsed President Lungu because he has shown willingness in developing the country. Mr. Chiteme, who is also a Kana member of parliament, says the endorsement has come after consultations in the constituencies by the MPs. Speaking at a media briefing in Dola this afternoon, Mr. Chiteme says some um, other MPs have mobilized themselves and will work hard to ensure President Lungu is re-elected in 2021. And Copper Belt Minister Boman Lusambo says uh, lawmakers in the province will mobilize their resources and ensure President Lungu is supported beyond the 2021. Mr. Lusambo, who is also a Kawushi member of parliament, said the MPs are determined in maintaining the Copper Belt as a home for the ruling party. He added that anyone wishing to challenge President Lungu for the 2021 elections will find it difficult because of the massive support he enjoys. Meanwhile, Deputy Parliamentary Whip, or rather Chief Whip Stephen Chungu, says that President Lungu's candidature in 2021 is unstoppable. And uh, speaking at the same uh, briefing, PF Copper Belt Province uh, Chairperson Stephen Kainga praised the MPs for their endorsement. Among the members of parliament who attended the media briefing are Chifubu MP Frank Ngambi, Ndola Central MP Manuel Mulenga and Chingola Central MP Matthew Zankua. Others are uh, Ngambwe MP Gift uh, Chialika and Mufalira Central MP Evans Chivanda. Together with our constituencies, because we have consulted our constituency chairman, we've consulted the constituencies, and they are all in support of His Excellency Edgar Chagualungu to stand for 2021. So we are here to declare that the president has the support from Copper Belt. In terms of support, we have support from all our members, from our constituencies, where we are coming from. It is his intention, and he has the support from the members of from the members of the Patriotic Front Party, and I believe with the Zambia is at large because he, he is the president that won under this new uh, constitution, which required a 50 plus one percent for one to win as president. While we take a second commercial break, we'll be right back with more news after the break. Minister of Information and Broadcasting Services Kampam Bamalenga has reaffirmed the government's commitment to work with the church in the development of the nation. Ms. Mulenga says government has a strong belief in the role of the church in developing, rather in delivering um, to the aspiration of the Zambian people. The information minister, who is also chief government spokesperson, was speaking during celebrations to mark the 10th anniversary of a priesthood for Kalulushi St. Michael's Catholic Church parish priest, Father Nicholas Mubanga. Here's a report. <laughs> It was a joyous occasion, no wonder many attended the event. This is the 10th anniversary celebration of priesthood for Father Nicholas Mbango of St. Michael's Catholic Church in Kalulush on the Copper Belt. But it was not all about song and dance. It was a moment to reflect on many things, including the national's prosperity. And we need to be passionate about our country, and that is what we are missing. That you don't care, uh, you can give to anybody as long as you get what you want. No passion for this country. We need the passionate people who when they want to do something, it works. And without, with passion, because there is an instinct there which makes things move. For Father Nicholas Mwanga, his 10 years as a priest has been a fulfilling journey. I've made missteps along the way. But I've discovered that the secret after climbing a great hill, one only finds that there are many more hills to climb. I've taken a moment today, I'm going to have a great afternoon, to rest, to see a view of a glorious vista that surrounds me. 
After the Thanksgiving service, the celebrations moved to Lunte Lodge in Kitwe for a reception. Here, Chief Government Spokesperson Kampamba Mlenga had the word of encouragement for Father Mbanga. Ten years of commitment, perseverance and hard work. The passion for reaching out to communities at large is extremely and exemplary. And we can only say, Ebenezer, that's far the Lord has brought you. You are a remarkable soul, and we can only say we love you as a community at large. This is the Kalulushi community. You have shown so much hope in the lives that you continue to touch every day. Former Vice President Lupando Mwape, Luansha Mayor Nathan Chanda, Kalulushi Mayor Rashida Mlenga, former Kwacha MP Bonnie Mutale, were among the dignitaries at the event. Tampundu, ZNBC News in Kalulushi. Well, Minister of Home Affairs Stephen Kampiongo has challenged the defense and security wings in the country to work hard in 2017 and make the country better. Mr. Kampiongo says men and women in uniform play an important role in contributing to national security and development. Hence, a government will, will continue supporting them. He says the defense and security services must strive to serve the public and the government of the day with discipline, loyalty and commitment. The minister has also called on men and women in uniform to desist from engaging in partisan politics while serving. Mr. Kampiongo was speaking at the Zambia Correctional Service Annual Ball in Kawe Central Province. And Correctional Service Commissioner General Percy Chatter said the service will ensure it sends more offices for UN peacekeeping missions this year. It is incumbent upon you to lay a good solid foundation of hard work and determination. Allow me, ladies and gentlemen, to recognize the important role played by the Zambia Correctional Service in operating safe and secure of correctional facilities. Government does recognize your contribution to national security and development. In this regard, you are assured of our unwavering support. The process of repealing and replacing the Prison Act, Chapter 97 of the Laws of Zambia, was advanced. This was a plus to the service because the current international best practices require a paradigm shift in prison management from retributive to correctional services. Well, you're watching ZNBC Main News, and right now we take our final break. Do stay tuned. Well, thank you for still staying with us. Several houses have been flooded while one has collapsed in Lusaka's Mississippi compound. The affected family members sustained minor injuries and have since been treated at the nearby clinic. Mississippi residents have attributed the floods to the poor drainage system that is discharging the water into their houses instead of the discharge point. Meanwhile, Minister of Chiefs and Traditional Affairs, Lawrence Sichalwe, who is also Chawama member of parliament says he has written to the road development agency rda to redo the drainage system in order to avoid floods hector simfukwe has details in this report the coming of the rains has brought problems to the people of lusaka's mrs compound several houses and toilets have so far been flooded people in the area have attributed these floods to this drainage system that is spilling over the water into their houses
Earlier member of parliament Lorenz Sicharwe has visited the affected families. During the visit, Mr. Sicharwe, who is also Minister of Chiefs and Traditional Affairs, came across a family whose house collapsed last night. Mr. Sicharwe has made a donation towards the rebuilding of the house to the affected family before urging them to build strong structures. When you are building, it's mixing one bag of cement with four wheelbarrows of sand. But you find they are under mixing, or uh, so they are over mixing, which makes the structure not be strong enough. Uh, if like uh, the blocks that they used here were strong enough and they've done a proper mixture of the, of the sand, it was not going to fall. The area member of parliament has also written to the road development agency to consider reworking on the drainage system in the area. In our tour, we've come across uh, two houses, but I'm made to believe there are many more which we haven't uh, seen. Uh, the major problem is uh, the flooding. These uh, drains that were constructed, they are not throwing, they are not discharging water to the discharge point. So at most points, they over flood and then they now go and spill in the houses. Uh, this is the more reason I had written last, last of last week to RDA, asking them if they could come back and uh, reassess these drainages. It looks like they do not have a gradient. For now, the authorities have urged the people to be patient as they address the problem. Hector Simfoko, TV2 News in Lusaka. Meanwhile, the Lusaka Province Health Office has stepped up its sensitization program against diarrheal diseases and any outbreak of cholera. Acting Provincial Health Director Kakungu Simpungwe says the provincial team is working closely with other stakeholders like UNICEF, World Vision and the local authority. Patricia Bander now reports. Of heavy rains have caused floods in some parts of Lusaka. In Kanyama compound, children are busy playing in flooded streets. But in the eyes of health experts, this water can aid the spread of waterborne diseases. This is why the Lusaka province health team has now moved in to sensitize the general public on how to prevent diarrhea and other diseases. All the districts have activated their district epidemic preparedness committees. These are committees that have different stakeholders that help us uh, prevent diarrhea diseases and the outbreak of cholera. So our stakeholders include the local authorities, the water utility companies, we have NGOs. At Kanyama Clinic, this team of volunteers mobilized and went on an education sensitization exercise in the compound. Kanyama is quite a vast um, area, catchment. But we have certain places that are densely, densely populated, like the markets and uh, the bus stops and uh, the standpoints where people draw water. So we want to target uh, those areas in, as, in, as, uh, in, in our effort to try and uh, disseminate as much information as possible. They are also distributing chlorine to be used in shallow wells and for purifying the water. Meanwhile, Kanyama Clinic, which last year had one of the highest numbers of cholera cases, is not leaving anything to chance. We are receiving uh, just the usual diarrhea cases and uh, actually there are cases that we are able to manage. We've been managing them. Tindusaka Health Director Dr. Kakungu Simpungwe also highlighted what is prevailing in other districts of Lusaka. In Churundu they also have selected areas which uh, are recording high cases of, of, of diarrhea. Then in, in Rufunsa, they have high cases near the Luangwa Bridge. Prevention is better than cure. And what health workers and volunteers are doing in areas affected by floods in Lusaka is timely. Patricia Banda, ZMBC News, Lusaka. Well, let's just end the news with a quick recap of stories making headlines tonight. President Edgar Lungu says he has received reports that some civil servants are being harassed on account of belonging to certain regions.
Investor Bank Zambia PLC has joined the winding up proceedings of the Post Newspapers Limited in liquidation as secured creditor. Government will this year sign a 220 million kwacha contract for the Kalomo Dundumwezi Iteji Teji Namwala Road in Southern Province. And several houses have been flooded while one has collapsed in Lusaka's Mississi compound. Well, that's it for the news. Thank you so much for watching. Do make a date with us at 22 hours Central African time. On behalf of my sign language caster, Loveness Simbe and Pat Sina Hankanga, good evening.